we're going to take a look at properties of solids. But before we get into that, we are going to go over ranking these five types of bonds. We have covalent, dipole-dipole, hydrogen, ionic, and London forces. If we were to rank these, this is how I would do it. The weakest type of bond that you can have is a covalent. Then there are certain things or certain aspects, van der Waals forces, that will strengthen this covalent bond. So London forces would be next. More electrons, more heavy, harder to break. From there, we would move on to dipole-dipole forces, which is number two. Hydrogen bonding, which is not. Hold on, hold on, number three. And lastly, the strongest type of bond is an ionic bond. An ionic bond, I don't know if I told you guys this, but basically, oh, <laughs> Okay, so the final answer is one, five, two, three, four. So a covalent bond, those are much easier to break. They boil um, at very low temperatures. Ionic bonds are very hard for us to reach boiling point. So something like table salt, the salt that we sprinkle on our food, it boils at approximately 850 degrees Celsius. We have we have not been experimentally able to prove that it melts at that temperature because the equipment melts before we even reach the temperature to melt, to boil salt. So, theoretically, it's... For each of the following compounds, we need to identify which one would have a higher boiling point and give reason. So, taking a look at A, would the first or second one have a higher boiling point. So second. Why? More electrons. So because more electrons. Next one, we have looking at B, which one would be higher boiling point? First or second? Why? Because it's polar, so therefore it has dipole dipole force. C. First or second? First. Why? Last one. First or second? First, it's ionic. And as we realize, ionic bonds are some of the hardest bonds to bring to a boil. Today's learning goals are to describe metallic bonding and describe covalent crystals. So here we have a picture of metallic bonding. Metallic bonding happens within metals. In metallic bonding, electrons are shared across the salt. Because they are shared, they are mobile. So what they do, see here how we have those electrons that are allocated across those positive charges or the protons. What these electrons do is they kind of move all over the, pro the protons. They delocalize. They, they move around, making them mobile electrons. The reason for this is because metals have low electron negativity. It allows the electrons to be free. So they can freely move across the metal. This contributes to the electron being a mobile electron, which gives metallic compounds the following properties. So because these electrons are mobile, they give us the following properties. The first one is malleable. 
Does anybody know what malleable means? It bends. We can bend and shape the metal. Okay, so things like wiring, that's why it's easy for us to bend metallic, or sorry, copper wire, because it has mobile electrons. Does anybody know what ductile means? Stretch. Strength. More like strength. So what happens is, when the metal deforms, it still is tough. It, it maintains its toughness. So it deforms, but still maintains It's strength or toughness. So it's really hard to pull apart. Sorry. They're good conductors. That means that they can transfer heat and electricity. Co covalent crystals are formed by a network of covalent bonds. So what happens is those types of bonds, the covalent bonds, form multiple bonds to create a network. Okay, for example, here I have a diagram of diamond and graphite. So let's compare. Let's look at some things that we notice about the structure of carbon. So carbon is having a bunch of tetrahedrals joined together. <clears throat> Whereas, so this is used to form diamonds. It's a bunch of tetrahedrals of carbon that squish together to make diamonds. Here, this ring here, this is used to make graphite. And it makes these sheets of graphite. Looking at these two, which one do you think would be stronger? The, the diamond or the graphite? Diamond. Okay, let's, let's explore why. So, for example, diamond and graphite. Diamond and graphite, which is your pencil lead. Pencil lead. are both composed of carbon. So they're both made out of carbon. However, they have different networks. Those networks affect the strength of the molecule. Okay, so what you're using to write is made out of graphite. If I scroll back up to the graphite diagram, we notice that it forms those sheets. Those sheets allow you to transfer the lead onto your paper. So every time you write, one of these thin layers of carbon is coming off onto your paper. Diamonds. Well, how diamonds are made is they take carbon and they, diamonds are man-made. They take carbon and they put it under tremendous heat and pressure. So they're forcing it to form into that stronger network. Now the thing about diamond is because it was created with such high heat and high pressure, eventually it will start to disintegrate because it's not always under high pressure, high heat. So what happens is if you get diamonds and you inherit them and it's like on the third or fourth generation of being passed down, you'll notice that the diamond is starting to lose its luster. That's because it's starting to disintegrate. So diamond is actually made very cheap. It's made out of carbon, but the media has made it so desirable that people buy it. And that's why the, the value of diamond has gone up. 